a model steamboat named Edith. This episode is part 23 and it's about painting the rudder and making the exhaust pipe. I'm going to start with the rudder and what I'm doing at the moment is using a needle file to smooth down the soft solder that holds components in place on the rudder. I don't think I'd make a rudder this way. I would use silver solder which is a lot stronger. And while I'm on the subject of silver solder, I got a really strange comment from a viewer. He seemed to be very confused. In the message, he put that he was using some soft silver solder. So he misread any of the directions I've ever given on here, and he was using soft solder along with some soft solder flux. And that's not going to work. Please be aware, silver solder is soldered with silver in it. It doesn't refer to the colour of the solder because silver solder is actually more of a brassy colour than silver. So it would appear that this particular viewer who took the time to write in was using soft solder and not silver solder. He then applied so much heat that the parts he was soldering were glowing red. And if I remember correctly from the message, I think he actually melted the parts he was soldering together. I recently made a video compilation of my silver soldering videos, so maybe you should watch those. In my workshop I have many pieces of wood like this, and this is a painting jig. And I made this particular jig, which was very easy to construct, to support the front wheels of my sterling single while the paint dried. I drilled a hole in part of the jig so I could push the rudder shaft into it. And first of all I'm going to paint the rudder using this stuff. This is Phoenix Precision Paints Grey Single Pack Etch Primer. Very shortly I'm going to do a feature on different etch primers in order to find out how effective they are when used for painting brass. I've used this type of etch primer for many years and I find it to be very effective, provided you read the instructions. And the first thing to do is to shake the can for about two minutes. In this clip, I've put my wooden jig into my vise and now the rudder is at the right angle to be painted. The instructions that come with this Phoenix Precision Paints etch primer state very clearly that you must not apply the paint too thickly to the component. You need to still be able to see the metal underneath the paint. So it's a very light coat and then, most importantly, you need to wait at least 24 hours before overcoating with your top coat or any other kind of primer. If you dive into this job and apply a really thick coat of the etch primer, just like you would with a normal filler primer, and overpaint within the 24 hour period, you will find that the etch primer is not doing its job and the paint will not stick to the brass properly. And once it's all dried and looking good, the paint will flake off with the slightest provocation. The next component to look at is the chimney extension. This is a little bit rough, but believe me, when I first got the boat to repair, it was a bit rougher. It had been soft soldered, the soft solder had melted, and it was just a mess. So I re-silver soldered it, and it's not the neatest silver soldering job I've ever done but it will be more than adequate for the intended application. This part fits into the end of the boiler's flue tube at one end and the other end points up the chimney. The next job to do is to make a specially shaped piece of pipe that takes the exhaust from the condenser and with the help of a long copper pipe it will direct the exhaust steam up the chimney. In this clip using a felt tip pen I'm marking a line in the middle of the condenser and this will show me the position where I need to fit the upright pipe that goes all the way through the chimney extension and up the chimney itself. I was going to use a PM Research elbow, but then I thought, no, I'll make something different. So I put a square piece of brass into the four-jaw self-centering chuck that's fitted to my smart and brown lathe, and I'm just turning down the end to make the part just look better. It's cosmetic only. I don't really need to do this. I could just leave the end square and silver solder the pipes into that, but I thought, well, if I turn it down and make a round bit, it will look better. And so the usual procedure, first of all a centre drill, a centre drill is a short stubby drill so it doesn't wander about, followed by using a quarter of an inch diameter twist drill to drill the hole that's going to accept the copper pipe that's going to be silver soldered in there. And I'm not drilling too far down this part because when I part it off I don't want to have a hole at the other end. Although if that happened it's not the end of the world, I would just make a simple plug that went in the hole and then when I silver soldered the pipe into it, I would also silver solder the plug. But in this case, I don't think I'll need to do that because it's parting off at the right distance. I don't often say this, but here's one I prepared earlier. This is the complete assembly, with the bent pipe that fastens to the condenser, 
the adapter in the middle and the long pipe that goes all the way up the chimney. 24 hours has now elapsed since I painted the rudder with etch primer and it's time to paint it with the red paint. I mix sufficient red paint to paint the hull and I have some left. As you can see here, the rudder is still plugged firmly into my jig that I made and I'm supporting the other end on a piece of 2x1 that I found in my box of assorted pieces of 2x1. But in reality, this piece of wood is less than 2x1, it's metric. To paint the rudder, I'm using this superb paintbrush that I bought from the Leeds model shop. It's absolutely wonderful. I've shown it in a couple of other videos, and it really is a nice brush. For painting jobs like this, I do prefer to use flat brushes with very soft bristles, because you don't get any brush marks, and you get a good coverage of paint, and the paint coverage is always even. And brushes like this are also very good for applying varnish. In this clip you can see the advantages of using a jig to support the work. It allows me to position the rudder horizontally so I can apply more paint. If the rudder was vertical then the paint may run because I generally always paint on the drip with this kind of enamel paint. What that means is I put a lot of paint on, I get good coverage, the brush marks will disappear as the paint dries and the top coat will be firmly stuck to the etch primer which in turn after 24 hours is firmly stuck to the brass underneath. Just to reiterate, if you put too much etch primer on and paint over it with the top coat too quickly, the etch primer cannot do its job, so the paint will not be firmly stuck to the brass. And even before you finish the model, you will find that you have to do a lot of touching up as the paint flakes off it, which is very annoying seeing as it takes a long time to paint these components. I also bought an unpainting brush, so I'm going to just test it out now. This brush looks and feels identical to the brush that I applied the paint with, but there the similarity ends. This brush is entirely different, you can see what it's doing, and this unpainting brush removes the paint just as well as the other brush applied it. If I'm honest, I think that unpainting is more satisfying than actually painting. But in the end, I used the other brush and repainted it. That's it for the painting in this episode. I'd like to show you how the exhaust pipe turned out. Here it is on the bench, the curve pipe comes out of the condenser and it's silver soldered to the brass block which in turn is silver soldered to the long pipe that goes up through a hole underneath the chimney extension. Very soon all of these components will be fitted into the hull. It's nearly that time when I need to float the boat and fit the ballast. And that's it for this episode, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.